Hi YouTube, in today's video I'm going to be replacing my right lower and left upper ball joints. This is so that I can pass an inspection to get RV insurance. So I'm just going to jump right into it, show you what I'm doing. I'm just following some YouTube tutorials for a different model vehicle, so we'll see how well this goes. <laughs> Luckily for me, my father was in town and he dropped me off this impact wrench that's going to make removing these lug nuts a lot easier. This little cap here is giving me a little bit of grief. I'm not sure how to remove it. Um, but the tutorial that I'm following says I need to do that in order to loosen uh, my axle nut. So I'm not sure how to proceed with that. I'm going to try taking uh, the wheels off and jacking it up, see if that uh, makes a difference. If not, I can always put them back on. So there you can see both jack stands in place. I found a place in the center here to jack up from, so I'm going to go ahead and jack up the vehicle. Uh, every once in a while I'll go down and I'll move up the two jack stands so that I'm being safe. Okay, so I've actually jacked it up all the way and the tires are still on the ground. So I'm going to undo it and put some more boards on, then jack it up again. Okay, so I actually managed to find another board, jack it up twice. So this is basically two of these jacks jacked up. Uh, essentially if that makes sense and then I actually took the wheels off you can see them back there because I actually had to lower it down I took the wheels off with it just on this jack stand um, with a couple with maybe an inch above the jack stand I mean just on the jack with maybe just an inch above the jack stands and then I lowered it back down so it's secure now I'll have to jack it up again when I put uh, the wheels back on but I've just actually locked off this jack for now so it's a backup source of support Okay, so here is what I'm left with. Now there is a little hole over here that I think is for actually uh, removing this cap. Um, maybe a tool goes in there, something like that, and is then used to pry this out. Would you like the good news or the bad news first? Good news is I got it off. Bad news, I put a hole in it. Probably not a good thing. So let me know if I need to replace this part, but there we go. I now have access to my axle nut. Okay, so my axle nut is actually a castle bolt with a cotter pin. <sighs> so I have to remove that. Hopefully I don't break the cotter pin. The cotter pin is out. This castle nut is not a size socket that I have, so I need to go buy a socket. You can see I have that nut removed. I then bash the axle a little bit with a hammer in order to loosen it. By the way, this is how I'm keeping things so that I have track of everything. I have all my lug nuts, cap, even the cotter pin in here. So I did try to loosen up the brake line. I cannot get this bolt because the access to it on the other side, you just can't get access to that head. There's nothing, there's a, there's a stud poking through. Basically, yeah, that's not coming off. So I'm just going to have to deal with that, basically. Uh, I've also cleaned up around here. I believe these need to come off next. Okay, so it was a bit of a pain, but I got these bolts out, and yeah, so now I need to figure out what the next step is. Okay, so I did manage to get this brake cable loose. Uh, it was a real pain to do so. The problem here is this little bit here kind of interferes with putting a, uh, a socket or a wrench around that, but I did manage to get it out in the end. So it's kind of hard to see what this is. This is the rear side of my brake caliper. There's this screw here which just kind of has an allen key head um, and it can come out and then there's two pieces here and I think they need to go that way um, in order to remove this caliper there are no other bolts back here anywhere else that is keeping this on so I think this is it this is really weird okay so this is called a key I believe uh, it's actually the next day and I confirmed that this is what I needed to do it was getting kind of late so I've just come back to it. I just knocked it out here with the screwdriver, so now I'm going to try and remove the caliper. Okay, so here you can see the caliper's off. It came off super easy with that key removed. I've just placed it on this bucket so that I don't put any uh, pressure on the brake line there. Now I believe I should be able to uh, work on the ball joint. Okay, so this here is my ball joint. That is the castle nut on the bottom there. I'm going to try and take it off. I believe that is what we should do next. Okay. 
I've just taken this uh, brake and hub off, so I am left with this. This castle nut here at the bottom of the ball joint is what I want to remove next. Okay, here you can see that that castle nut has been taken off. So here we have the ball joint exposed. Uh, hopefully I should be able to get it out now. You can see how, yeah, I can lift that right up. So I should be able to, yeah, just like that. There we go. <laughs> it might be a little hard to see, but I've cleaned up the joints here a little bit with some brake clean and a little bit of sandpaper. So here is a seat for the upper ball joint. My ball joint is basically two pieces. One piece goes in here like this and the other comes up to meet it like that and the bolts keep this nice and tight to the surface here. So here you can see that has been installed. That's what it looks like underneath. These still need to be tightened of course. So in order for the ball joint to actually fit through that hole, I'm actually going to need to jack up this knuckle. It's just incredibly heavy and it's under tension. So I'm thinking I should be able to slowly jack it in and guide that through, then put the castle nut on. Okay, so I've just put in a grease fitting here that I can actually access, as opposed to the one that the ball joint comes with. I'm just gonna pump some grease in here. Uh. Okay, so I've just put this brake back on, including the hub, and I've just basically put that castle nut right around the axle again, just hand tight to keep it in place. I've installed the brake calipers exactly as they were. I've torqued down this axle nut here and installed the cotter pin. Buying a new part seems silly when you can just repair the part you have. So I have some filler here just to fill in that hole that I made in this cap. It's not that big from this side, as you can see. So I think this should be just fine. Here's that cap fully reinstalled. So there we have it, one upper ball joint fully installed on the driver's side of the vehicle. Whoops, just one more thing, I forgot to reattach this clip that holds the brake line in place, so I've just taken care of that. Well that's an awesome feeling uh, to get that fully finished, so I'm going to hop over to the other side and do the lower ball joint on the right hand side of the vehicle. So over on the right hand side of the vehicle you can see that I've pretty much done everything that I did to the other side right up until the point where I had to remove the calipers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Okay, so I'm just taking out the caliper and I thought I'd show you how that works there. There is this bit here and then this little like spring up here and I'm just knocking them out sideways with a hammer. And that's what those two parts look like once they're taken off. Back here is another part with another clip that I forgot to show in the first one. It just fits in here. It also comes out. And then I've just put the caliper up on this bucket so that it's not under any tension. So I've gone ahead and removed this. It just occurred to me, you probably don't need to take the caliper off for this. This whole thing can probably just slide out, but whatever. There we have it. This here is my lower ball joint. You can see it's really caked in gunk and stuff. I'm going to start by removing the cotter pin up top here. I just want to show you what the upper one looks like. Lower. <laughs> yeah, this needs to come out. Okay, so I've got the castle nut off. Unfortunately, the cotter pin broke right off here when I was trying to remove it. So I basically just cut it off and I'm going to try and punch it out now. Here you can see where that pin has sheared off. And it just occurred to me, I don't need to take this out. This is the ball joint. It can just go. This is the castle nut for my upper ball joint. That needs to come off so I can separate the knuckle from uh, this part here. This is the cotter pin from that castle nut. It came out beautifully. So there's the castle nut out as well. I am now going to pry these two apart. I'm having a real hard time uh, basically separating these two and I'm not sure it's 100% necessary. The tutorial that I'm following uh, says it is, but it's a very different ball joint. So I'm going to give it a try without it. Okay, so I've just removed the dust shield here, thrown it over here because it was just sort of getting in my way. I should address the fact that the rest of the video is probably going to be really bad. I dropped something real heavy on my phone and it's not working. Maybe I can get it repaired, maybe not. Brand new phone, which sucks. So I'm using my camera, which you can't actually see what you're filming when you're filming it because the viewfinder is also broken because I also dropped something on it. So we'll see how this goes. After much bashing, I actually managed to separate this upper ball joint. I've also gone ahead and separated the tie rod. 
this might be the most insane thing I've ever seen. I actually shattered the ball joint. I've got all these little fragments here um, by hitting the knuckle rather than actually get this to budge. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try and press out the bottom half of that ball joint now. Finally, some honest goodness success. I just need to get the second part out of here. Okay, so I finally, finally got this out. And the way I did it was basically I put this over here. I put the clamp in like this. And because I didn't have a piece, I just stuck my axe in here. And then I used the impact wrench. And that actually finally broke this out. This piece is so stubborn. Okay, so I've just set up the press to go ahead and install this joint here. Okay, here it is, fully pressed in. That was a hell of a job. Here it is with the boot reinstalled. Okay, so I've cleaned up this knuckle with some wire brushes and some brake clean, especially where it meets other parts. This ball joint has a washer and a castle nut, and those have both been hand tightened down here. I will we'll torque them down and then put the cotter pin through. This has now been torqued down to 50 foot pounds. Okay, so this tie rod is back in place, and the nut there has been torqued down to 35 foot pounds with the cotter pin. In order for this upper ball joint to meet this knuckle, I'm going to have to jack up the lower uh, control arm here. Okay, so I've jacked it up. It's actually got a little bit of weight on it, which isn't too good. But over here, I do actually have this in place, just hand tight. So I'll torque it down and put the cotter pin in. You can see the upper ball joint castle nut has been torqued down, cotter pinned, and I've also lowered the jack so that we're back onto our jack stands properly. Okay, I've put this rotor back on. I'm now going to add the caliper back. I almost made a very bad mistake by not in installing this shield back. So I put it there. I'm going to go back to where I was before. So this brake caliper is back and installed. I've put this in by hand. I just need to hook up the clip here for the brake line. So this clip is now reinstalled properly. Okay, so I've just jacked up the van back to where it was when I took the wheels off. Okay, so the wheels are back down on the ground. I just put a board underneath, of, underneath each of the wheels. That seemed to help but it's not supported by any jacks now. I just need to drive it forward a little bit and it'll be fully on the ground. And I torqued and cottered down the axle on this side. With this cap back in place, the job is done. So I'm just starting on the driver's side. I've just put the wheel over top of those and now I'll put the lug nuts on. Torqued and cottered on this side. Both wheels have been fully torqued down. The final thing that I did was to install this fitting and add some grease to the ball joint. 